It was a quiet Sunday when we visited Tauber Bischofsheim, a small town with a history going back to the 9th century. Originally called just Bischofsheim, it was renamed to distinguish it from other Bischofsheims in Germany. The town's main attraction is the 13th century palace. Tauber Bischofsheim belonged to the Archbishopric of Mainz. Apparently it gained city status in around 1240, but lost its independence after the Peasants' War. It subsequently became part of the Principality of Leiningen, then the Grand Duchy of Baden, then the Republic of Baden, and after World War II it was part of the province of Württemberg-Baden, then Baden-Württemberg. German history is full of such complications. St. Martin's Parish Church is relatively new. It was completed in 1914. This neo-Gothic building is not the first church on this site. Inside are works of art and other treasures from earlier buildings, including a 16th century altar made by Niklaus Weckmann from nearby Ulm. Tauber Bischofsheim is, on the face of it, a fairly pretty little town, except that some parts are prettier than others. This house, in desperate need of renovation before it finally crumbles, boasts some carved wooden panels illustrating a local legend. The marketplace is actually quite handsome nicely proportioned with some well-preserved half-timbered houses. The neo-gothic town hall does look more like a railway station, but never mind. People of Tauber Bischofsheim, if you need to close off half of a historic marketplace, this is not the way to do it. It can be done far more discreetly. You do expect some modern intrusions, of course, but there are limits. Here's a fine historic building. And here's how to make it ugly. It's mostly small cosmetic problems, but noticeable ones. It's not modernity I'm complaining about. It's the jarring contrasts that have been allowed to proliferate. Had it not been in such a picturesque little corner, uh, this building would probably not have seemed quite so ugly. And so we left Tauber Bischofsheim a little disappointed. The next place on our itinerary was bound to be better. Down the road we headed to nearby Bad Mergentheim, also marked on my map as worth seeing. Merchador, as the locals call it, is a thousand years old. The prefix Bad means that it is a spa town. You can take a rest cure here if the stress of modern life is getting to you. The large castle was the headquarters of the Teutonic Order. Originally founded as a charitable order, establishing hospitals for crusaders, it soon became a military order and a political power. It caused trouble in Central and Eastern Europe, 
went into decline and held on until eventually outlawed by Hitler. It was re-established after the war, but purely as a charitable organisation. If you like, you can take some time to wander around the castle grounds and maybe repair to the Kurhaus, where, if you're brave enough, you can take the waters. The first inkling that the townsfolk have been a little inconsistent with preservation comes when you visit this ensemble, apparently rebuilt from scratch. It's supposed to be historic, but there's no escaping the fact that this is 1980s architecture. It may have seemed a good idea to put coloured glass panels in a huge half-timbered facade, but it looks cheap and tacky, especially when nobody's cleaned them for months. The goose market is a bit of a jumble. Some houses are new, some are old and crumbling, others are old and badly maintained. Some have had their lower floors vandalised by unsympathetic architects. And then there's this symphony, in concrete, glass, plastic and neon. Another town, another marketplace, with some fine historic buildings, all well preserved and in keeping with the German spa town, and this. Modern buildings are fine, but in my view they should at least make an effort to blend in. What do you think? Couldn't have put it better myself.